Good day, all of you. Uh, thank you very much for organizing to invitation our institute to participate in this uh, conference. And uh, I want to uh, talk about the legal status of uh, Tibetan medicine in nowadays in Russia, status of institutions and specialists of Tibetan medicine, and its integration in the national health system. Uh, please, next slide. Mm -hmm. Buddhism penetrated to Buryat Republic uh, and to uh, Russia beginning from the early 17th century. It was brought by Buddhist missionaries from Tibet and Mongolia uh, for the short Tibet and Mongolia. For the short period of time, Buddhism and Buddhist monasteries took an important place in spiritual, cultural, and social life of the Buryat population. Tibetan medicine was one of the important factors of this phenomenon. Next slide. At the turn of the uh, 1920th century in Tsarist Russia, Tibetan medical system was experiencing the peak of prosperity because they functioned medical faculties, uh, Mamba Datsans, at the largest Buryat Buddhist monasteries. In the early 20th century, the main schools of uh, Tibetan medicine were Mamba Datsans and at Gusinozyorsky, Tsugulsky, Aginsky, Atsagatsky, and Chelutai temples. The rapid many learned Buryat Emchi Lamas, approximately uh, 800 people. They translated many important medical uh, treatises uh, from Tibetan and composed their own works, dictionaries, textbooks. Buryat Buddhist temples and lamas were engaged in the production of multi-component drugs, created their own pre prescriptions of medicines based on local raw materials. Among them, uh, we can mention Kushok Hambulama Agwan Darjiv, the founder of Atsagats, Mamba Datsan, Kalsanji Badlgirv, Iral Tuif, Yondonov, and else. Next slide. Uh, the most well known of them uh, can be called two brothers, Alexander and Peter Badmaev. They studied medicine in Buryat Monastery and later popularized Tibetan medicine in Russia, having acquainted the Tsarist court with the effective methods of healing. Particularly known is uh, Peter Badmaev, a doctor, political and public figure, translator of the canonic treatise of Tibetan medicine, Zhutshi, into Russian. Peter Badmaev was a prominent um, practitioner of Tibetan medicine with excellent political connections in Russian imperial court. Peter Badmaev uh, <coughs> treated many Russian noblemen, famous persons and ordinary citizens, with the methods of Tibetan medicine. The population of the imperial capital of Russia learned about the effectiveness of treatment methods of Tibetan medicine through his deep knowledge and activities. Ambitious, uh, ambitions and interests of Badmaev extended far beyond medicine. He was a strong supporter of the Russian rush to the Eastern Asia. One of his projects was the training of Russian cultural agents in the Mongolian world and Tibet from the Aga Buryat youth, who were educated in the gymnasium he created and the St. Petersburg University. Among these Buryat scholars, uh, it is necessary to mention Gambajab Tsibikov, Tsibenjam Srano, Bazar Baradin. Uh, Tsibikov carried out the first perfectly documented expedition to Tibet. Jamsarano uh, and Baradin created a system of modern Mongolian and Buryat science and education almost 100 years ago. Last year, there was a celebration of the uh, 95th anniversary of the Buryat Scientific Committee. I took part in the publication of the documents uh, from the archive, uh, archive and I discovered that Jamsarano and Baradin paid the great attention to scientific study of Tibetan medicine and its integration into the Soviet health care system. Unfortunately, these attempts were, uh, represent, uh, were repressed soon and uh, revived only 70 years later. And I believe that uh, this uh, everlasting interest to debating medicine of Buryat scientists is also the heritage of Peter Badmaev. Uh, next slide. Uh, the heritage of Tibetan medicine becomes the object of scientific research 
since the end of uh, the first half of the 20th century. It was uh, studied by specialists in, in various fields, orientalists, philologists, historians, pharma uh, pharmacists, biologists, clinicians, and so on. Systemic academic research of the heritage of Tibetan medicine started in 1966 at the Buryat Scientific Center in the Department of Social Studies of our Institute for Mongolian, Buddhist, and Tibetan Studies, with the study of the experience of old Buryat Lamas of using natural raw materials in traditional Tibetan medicine and on this basis effective medicines based on them were created. Uh, the scientists of this institute um, have created new integrative medical technologies for treatment and prevention of some common diseases as well as effective and safe medicines from ecologically pure raw materials of Siberian region. These created medicines uh, were patented and certified, but they have not been licensed li licensed for industrial production. The accumulate uh, next slide. The accumulated results of our researchers found pra practical application in the creation of the Center of the Oriental Medicines Medicine in Ulan Ude. This center is the only state institution of Russia for 30 years working with the use of the methods of Tibetan medicine. This center provides medical services to the population from all over the Russia. The right for carrying these activities is certified by the state license. In Russia, the most common oriental medicine embraces uh, Chinese, uh, Tibetan, Mongolian, Buryat, Kalmyk, Ayurvedic systems of medicines. Uh, while the term Tibetan medicine has disappeared from official documents, giving way to the term traditional medicine. Next slide. The, pra the, the practice of integrating traditional medicine into the system of the Russian healthcare has revealed the following problems. First of all, connect with the process of, of formulating and development of consensual in uniform standards. Mm, the necessity of unification of terminology for creating common conceptual and legal basis, developing joint standards of diagnostic and treatment methods of raw materials used in medicines, the necessity of development of professional educational program of different levels. The future development of traditional oriental medicine in Russian Federation depends on the solution of several large complex problems. First of all, this is the problem of unsolved legal status of traditional medicine in Russia, including it into the official medical system. For the second, the importance of withdrawal of sanctions for the distribution and input, uh, and input of uh, medicines based on Tibetan formulas. But the third, founding the basis for educational programs for teaching doctors of traditional medicine. Next slide. All these problems uh, arose with the adoption of the federal law number uh, 323 called on the fundamentals of protecting the health of citizens in the Russian Federation. This law significantly limited the legal status of traditional medicine in Russia in general, with all negative implications arising from it. The adoption of this law opposed it uh, to the official European medicine, which is strictly regulated by the state through a legis legislative framework. This situation uh, means that according to this law organization of traditional medicine, specialists and medic medicines can not be licensed and cannot be controlled by the state institutions, and that is why the activities are not legal. Traditional medicine is equated to folk medicine, uh, to the not a scholarly system, traditional folk healing. The need for legalization of traditional methods of treatment of oriental medicine facilitated the unification of efforts of scientists, doctors and politicians, politic, um, politicians and promotion of the regulatory and legal issues of Tibetan medicines in the legislative field. Thus, for the past five years, the state parliament, uh, Duma, has held round tables on the topic of legal regulation, legal regulation of the perspective of the development of traditional folk and oriental medicine in the Russian Federation. Next slide. As a result of those in the creation in the state parliament of the expert committee uh, on traditional medicine, the work of this committee is aimed at changing uh, the existing laws and regulations like the federal law, uh, and on the circulation of medicines for including 
uh, phytotherapy, hirudotherapy, and homeopathy, homeopathy into the register of specialist, specialties uh, that were in, uh, excluded early from it, as well as to decide the problem of restoration of the Federal Scientific Clinical Experimental Center for traditional methods of diagnosis, diagnosis and treatment that has been closed according to this law. The committee, the committee has worked uh, out a special plan for the integration of traditional medicine into the modern medical health uh, care system and has passed it to the Ministry of Health of the Russian Federation. The main demand of this document is to include methods of traditional medicine, phytotherapy, manual therapy, reflexology, uh, pulse diagnostic into the standards of modern medical care and to add the specialties, phytotherapist, homeopath, traditional medicine doctor to the nomenclature of specialists with a high medical and pharmaceutical education. This will give to the doctors the right for carrying on the work officially and legally. This expert committee under the State Duma is trying to develop a new mechanism for accelerated certification of medicines and for creating new special pharmacopoeia for traditional medicines. Next slide. Uh, successful realization and implementation of these tasks connected with official recognition of the legal status of traditional medicine will provide for effective integration of the legacy of Tibetan med medicine uh, into modern Russian healthcare program and will give a new impetus to the scientific research of oriental medical system in general and particularly of the Tibetan medicine. Next slide. Uh, the formation of the regulatory framework, first of all, should be based on knowledge base. The scientists of Institute for Mongolian, Buddhist and Tibetan Studies formed this database and created such sites. This is a great collection of Tibetan medicine literature that is preserved at uh, this institute, and electronic catalog of this collection is completed. All texts were identified and attributed. The description included genre affiliations, author, place of origin, colophon, detailed annotation. Some of the texts have been translated into Russian of or transliterated. All text titles and other related information are given in standard Latin transliterations and Cyrillic transcriptions. This is done with the purpose to make the, it the main basis for the future, future integration of various medicinal informational resources. The database Tibetan source of traditional medicine comprises the electronic catalog, transla uh, translations, and transliterations of the selected text indexes created at the academic and research centers of Russia. Now it's used as the basis of specialized digital, uh, digital, digital libraries. Next slide. Uh, this is an example of the database input on the uh, website of the Center of Oriental Manuscripts and Xylographs. Next slide. Uh, this is description of medical text in the database. There is a search uh, engine uh, that allows convenient retrieving of interesting text from the database. Next slide. Medical texts are structure, structured, uh, structured into the major uh, semantic groups of genres. History of medicine, primary sources, uh, comments on the primary sources, the prescription references, manual uh, therapeutic procedures, work of uh, uh, pharmacology, medical terminological dictionaries, bibli bi bibliographical and references literature. Text contains the list of received medical doctrines, medical treatises from Buddhist canon, Ritual med medical text. Next slide. Uh, computer aided uh, database Tibetan medicine. It contains information on medical uh, feedstock materials, the, the receipts of uh, medicines, the nosology of Tibetan medicine. The database consists of the following four main data sets Handbook of the Diseases in Tibetan Medicine, Materia Medica of Tibetan Medicine, the Catalog of medic, uh, Medicinal Raw Materials, Handbook of Receipts, Dictionary of Medicinal uh, uh, Ingredients in the Tibetan Language, uh, Content in based on Kumpan Dudzi, data, uh, data sets are linked at the level of the data structure and software. Next slide. 
Terminological studies of Tibetan Mongolian medicine. Tibetan Mongolian Russian glossary of Tibetan medicinal terms with Sanskrit and Latin parallels is based on researches and transla translations of ancient medical sources in the Tibetan and classical Mongolian languages with the involvement of the material presented in modern works and dictionaries published by Tibetan and Mongolian practitioners, as well as Russian and foreign scientists. The glossary includes key terms of Tibetan medicine, the title of medical text, name of author, and else. To some of them, these uh, terms, Mongolian and Sanskrit equivalents are given. Some complicated terms that have ambiguous um, uh, meaning are supplemented by brief explanation. All the term and vocabulary explanations, especially related to the description of diseases, anatomical features, and else, are given within the framework of Tibetan and Mongolian traditional knowledge that confirms it is age-old tradition and identity. The total number of entries in the database of the electronic glossary includes 3,695 entries. For 90% of them, the Mongolian equivalents were given, and for more than 400 terms, uh, Latin accordances um, uh, were established, allowing to identify these terms with the help of modern scientific identifiers and reference books. This uh, year glossary of Tibetan medicinal terms is based on wiki uh, technology. Uh, this is the address of this site, dictionary AMBT archive uh, point rule. In conclusion, I want to say that uh, this work uh, of our institution for, uh, is very important to uh, promotion and uh, reserve uh, Tibetan uh, medicine in Russia. And I uh, can say that the base of traditional medicine of Russia, it is Tibetan medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, I think we we will open a uh, question for the audience. Ayuna, thank you very much for your speech. It was very enthusiastic and hopeful, <laughs> and it was very interesting to hear you, but I want to ask you one question. Um, you said in one line, uh, Mongolian, Buryatian, Tibetan medicine, and so I want to. Uh, so you suppose that there is Buryatian medicine, or it is branch of Tibetan medicine? Uh, um, nowadays, I can say that it is uh, the Buryat branch of Tibetan medicine. Okay, thank you. It was all. Teams there uh, in uh, your medicine, but uh, uh, it meets actually in uh, India and Nepal and other countries. The basic uh, meeting point for all of us, uh, being so requires system of medicine or Tibetan system of medicine, is Guji, the fundamental textbook. Whoever follows the Guji fundamental textbook, we consider they are Swarika practitioners. Likewise, in Russia, there is difference on what is your fundamental textbook. Uh, the fundamental, uh, the fundamental book, textbook is, is uh, of course, Atlas of Tibetan Medicine and Duchi. And uh, our lemas uh, in the early of 20th century, all of them uh, can translate this from Tibetan language uh, to Mongolian language to Buryat language, and uh, our scholars uh, study this uh, textbook. Nowadays, uh, our uh, doctors, uh, all of them uh, uh, new, uh, um, study this uh, Duchi and use uh, base uh, formulation from this textbook. Uh, Tibetan medicine is uh, very popular in Russia. So among all, I mean, four traditional medicines like Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, what uh, what makes uh, uh, Tibetan medicine so like famous in China? Not the Chinese medicine. Uh, no, no, in, in Russia. Russia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think. Um Thank you for your questions. Uh, I think that uh, the main uh, 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 why is so popular because this medicine system, only this system, have many many books. 
have many glossaries and uh, terminological uh, uh, to, uh, books. So uh, uh, our scientists, our lamas, can uh, himself study this medical system, uh, can uh, um, can provide this and uh, uh, and uh, and use in practice. <laughs> Uh, I think Russian folk healing systems haven't uh, textbooks. Thank you. Um, I got a uh, small question. Like uh, in Tibetan medicine, that uh, the origin of the system is from India. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a very close connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, with medicine Buddha mm -hmm. and Shakyamuni Buddha, mm -hmm. you know, the same manifestation and practice. So we, it will be uh, inspiring mm -hmm. if you could share how the lamas mm -hmm. uh, practice. Uh, is it very much similar with medicine Buddha or is, is there any difference? Uh, could you please uh, in Russia. explain in, in Russia? Russia. Um, our uh, doctors of uh, official healthcare have um, academical education, and after that they have uh, courses courses of Tibetan medicine such as reflexology, uh, pulse diagnosis, and uh, manual therapy, uh, moxo, mo moxo therapy, and uh, acupuncture. Uh, these uh, courses is not uh, states; it's uh, private. Uh, and we, uh, and we collaborate with uh, our colleague, colleagues from uh, Tibet, from uh, Mongolia and Chinese uh, to study these uh, treatments. And Lamas, uh, they, uh, this uh, system of education, um, just a little another, they are uh, uh, they of course study Buddhist uh, philosophy, Buddhist um, terminology and they uh, studied uh, medical uh, treatments uh, and practice only in uh, Datsans, only in their temples. They cannot uh, to do practice in uh, common uh, clinical, cl in common clinics. Oh, there is one question. Sorry. Uh, so, in your talk, you said that uh, since 2011, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, Russian parliament um, doesn't recognize all the traditional medicines. So, you, do, do you think in the future, to, uh, Russian medi uh, traditional practitioners, um, they will face some legal problems in the future, do you think? Uh, licensed our treatments, our uh, medicines, uh, and... Uh, we can uh, do educational system of doctor of traditional medicine. I think uh, mm, some problems are lost. Thank you. Uh, if you look at Indian medical heritage, we have two types of medical tradition. One is codified classical system of medicine, mm -hmm. which is included under Ayush system of medicine. And uh, another steam is uh, non-codified system of medicine, which is more over for healing. Uh, then uh, you have also uh, home remedies and all these kind of things, which is not uh, kind of codified, which is not documented or written. Okay. Till now, uh, Government of India has recognized the codified classical system of medicine. Mm -hmm. That includes Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, Soarikpa, Homopathy, Yoga, Naturopathy. Okay. The six mm -hmm. system of medicines are uh, recognized and it is regulated by government. Now, another stem is that is uh, for killing non-codified system of medicine, whether it is in household or community, it is not regulated. So, government doesn't have any uh, policy formulation. Likewise, I wanted to ask you, in Russia, you have same uh, system like you have, uh, like uh, in India, I told you there is six system of medicine, which is codified classical system of medicine. Which other system of medicine are prevalent in uh, Russia? 
other than uh, sovaric or Tibetan medicine? Uh, uh, such, such, such as Tibetan medicine, I uh, don't know, maybe it is um, <coughs> Chinese medicine and uh, Mongolian. Our system is small and I, um, I don't know uh, what situation of them. But uh, the, the similar p problems of Sovarik uh, 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 similar pro there are, there is uh, there are in other Chinese and Mongolian medicines. <coughs> and uh, I think today that uh, if uh, Ayurvedic system, Sovarik uh, system can document it, uh, your. Uh, uh, medicines and your treatments, it's very good for us, for Russian uh, branch of uh, Tibetan medicine, because we can uh, study this uh, uh, source and use in our work to, to do legal, uh, our legal uh, works. Okay, sorry, I, I can make a small addition to Ayuna's answer to your question, because now uh, in Russia we have only one legal medical system, it's Western medical system, and it is uh, in uh, Russian healthcare system. All Chinese, Tibetan medicine, so over uh, Ayurveda and others, they are not legal. But uh, we have uh, special courses for our doctors. Uh, they called reflexive therapy, Ayuna told about it, manual therapy, osteopathy. And in that uh, specializations, uh, some methods of different traditional medical systems are in. So, for example, acupuncture, like the part of Chinese medicine, is in the uh, reflexive therapy. And, for example, massage kunye, for example, from Tibetan medicine, is in manual therapy. So, uh, and in our country, it is... Uh, one legal way to practice traditional medicine now. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, in Russia, I haven't uh, the doctor of traditional medicine. It's very great, very big problem. Mm -hmm. So once again, thank you so much, Miss Yuno, know, for your very inspiring um, uh, talk. Uh, on behalf of CCDM members, we would like to thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.